So I just start dripping. Or you can start going a little faster. Ugh, I maybe just broke it. Let's see if we can fix it. I just added a little shaving of ice because it'll melt so slowly, adding like drop by drop. Oh, I think I got it. Yes, yes! It's Manny's again. Now I'll stop talking and just finish it. I'm Samin Nasrat. I'm the author of Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, and the star of the Netflix series based on the book. I am gonna make tuna confit, which is a fancy French word for the best oil-preserved tuna. And then I'm gonna turn that into my favorite tuna sandwich, which is called a pan bagnat. There's the delicious melt-in-your-mouth tuna, so I wanna make sure to offer like punches of acid and punches of crunch, crunchy, punchy, crunchy. It might seem kind of crazy to go to such lengths, to have so many ingredients in a tuna sandwich, to make your own tuna, to make your own mayonnaise. But this is really one of my favorite sandwiches that there is. The first step in making this tuna confit is to season the tuna because I want to give the salt a chance to travel all the way inside and penetrate the fish all the way through so that every bite is perfectly salted. And that takes a little bit of time. When you've got a big piece of meat, you gotta do what I call the wrist wag and just like let it shower down. You wanna make sure to get both sides and the edges too. So the next thing we need to do is get our oil sort of warm and perfumed. So we have to heat up our oil gently. So this is just some olive oil. So how do I turn this thing on? Like a beep beep boop boop, uh-huh. Uh-huh, oh, got it, okay. So I have some black peppercorn, bay leaf, dried chili, you know, a garlic clove that I smash, and a little lemon zest. The most luxurious way to do this is to use extra virgin olive oil, but even in restaurants where I've worked, that is like way too expensive. So you can use pure olive oil, which is a lesser quality olive oil, or you could make your own mix of half and half to get it flavored and taste kind of like a pot of the Mediterranean coast. <laughs> You're aiming for 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll know that it's right when the aromatics that I put in there start to bubble a little bit. Let's see where we are. Oh, I'm too hot. Oh God, I'm way too hot, I went too hot. Oh God. So I was talking too much and I lost track of my oil. So I'm just gonna add some room temperature oil and try and get it back to around 160. There we go, there we go. No one's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now that all the salt has been absorbed, you just slip it into the oil. Depending on how thick you've cut it, it could take anywhere from like eight to 12 minutes. You can start to see just the edges of the fish are slowly, very slowly starting to change color. So while this is cooking, I'm gonna make the pickled onions, which I want to sit for at least 10 or 15 minutes. This is red wine vinegar, and I'm just gonna use enough to coat. This just sits. It's been maybe five minutes and it looks like the outside of the tuna, the white stuff <laughs> has crawled around and is reaching all the way to the top, which to me is a signal that the bottom is probably halfway cooked. So I'm just gonna flip. It's actually quite far. Maybe it won't even take the full 10 minutes. To me, confiting is soft, tender things. For almost anything else, you can't overcook it. For this, you absolutely can. But because it's going so slowly, you're not gonna like turn around, sneeze, and it's overcooked. <laughs> Let's check this guy. Ooh, beautiful. There we go. That's what I would still call like rare, medium, rare. And it's nice because it means when I go to pull it into pieces and shred it, it will actually break instead of me like having to do the intense pulling. And this oil is like liquid gold. So this gets saved because we're gonna use it in our sandwiches. It was also expensive, remember? So like, don't throw it away. Also, I dripped a whole bunch of oil on my shoes, so excuse me. <laughs> okay, so the fish is all out, so I'm just gonna let that sit. I really want to serve it at room temperature, so unless I need to chill it, I'm not gonna chill it. So next, I'm just gonna make some mayonnaise. The first thing I'm gonna do is get all the little side things ready. So I like to put a little bit of garlic paste really quickly. I use a little bit of salt, and then you just use the side of the blade the last thing you want when you're eating raw garlic is to get a chunk of it in your mouth. So spend the extra 30 seconds to get it all the way broken down. Garlic, anytime you cut it up or pound it or smush it, it's gonna start to oxidize and that's gonna start to create unpleasant flavors in the garlic. So to me, that just means putting it in a little bowl and covering it 
not with a towel, and covering it with oil. <laughs> and again, it doesn't have to be submerged, just coated. So anytime you're making an emulsion, which mayonnaise is, I like to think of an emulsion as a peace treaty between oil and water. If you just mix oil and water or oil and vinegar, the oil floats to the top because it's less dense and they stay separate. So in this case, the water that we start with is like the minuscule amount of water in the egg yolk, and the oil that I'm adding drop by drop will bind to that and stay thick. So for two yolks, that's about a cup and a half of oil. You can start with a little pinch of salt. So I just break up my yolk, and I start dripping. People get a really, I don't know, frustrated by how slow you have to go in the beginning. If you go too fast, you're gonna break it though. There are some places where a person needs to use helmets. <laughs> there are other places where I really feel like the taste of homemade mayonnaise or homemade aioli is the only thing that's acceptable. You also don't wanna do what I just did, which was stop whisking. <laughs> Once you have like a nice thick creamy base like I have here, you can start going a little faster. So now I'm like actively squirting. So I'm gonna add my garlic first. This is plenty of mayonnaise, so I'll add the equivalent of one clove. My little trick for seasoning a mayonnaise more quickly is to dissolve my salt in whatever liquid I'm adding. So since I know I'm gonna add lemon juice, let's dissolve my salt in there. So now I'm salting and adding acid at the same step. Mm, good, 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 good. And it's a nice texture. It's like creamy. There's gonna be so much other stuff that will loosen up and make this sandwich juicy that I'm happy to leave this mayonnaise on the thick side. So. Good with that. Now we're just gonna get our little tapenade. Another thing I really love about a sandwich like this that has so many components is it gives me a chance to work in a whole bunch of different forms of salt and acid. We salted our tuna, we salted our mayonnaise, and then the really salty stuff is, you know, olives and capers, which are preserved with salt. These are briny capers and not salt packed, but either way, their source of salt. This Castel Vetrano olive is one of my favorite olives. They're super meaty. And if I could only ever have one olive again, it would be this. And because this is a Provençal dish, I'm gonna add some niçoise in there because it would be like heretical to not. Tastes like brining confetti, if you will. <laughs> now we're just gonna get our veggies ready. So these tomatoes are like, fine. They're not the world's juiciest summer tomatoes. So we're gonna do a little treatment. I'm just gonna lay them out and salt them. It doesn't need a ton, it's just enough to bring out some of that water. And then, I like a stripey peel on a cucumber, in part because I do actually think the skin tastes nice, but you don't necessarily want all that fiber, so getting rid of half of it seems like a good compromise. And then, I like slices. Again, I think you can lightly salt these, not necessarily even to draw out water, but like to make them taste good. Have that ready, pick some basil and then build our sandwich. All right, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Should I make a foot long? <laughs> okay. So because we got such beautiful crusty bread, I really want to make sure to build juiciness into the sandwich. That's where the mayonnaise comes in. This is my bottom. I always insist that a tuna sandwich has mayonnaise on the bread and in the tuna. So this was like a pound and a half of tuna. I think this mixture is gonna actually be more than enough for one baguette, which I think will make at least eight sandwiches. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna use all the mayonnaise, let's be real. <laughs> it's like the fanciest from scratch tuna salad you ever did see. I know this will need a little acid and I happen to have all this extra vinegar down here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that in there. Mm. You guys, tastes like summer. Go ahead, let's just do this in here too. I hate it when you eat a sandwich and the cucumbers fall out. So to prevent cucumber fallout, I'm gonna put it in here so it clings to the salad. Cucumber fallout, the greatest tragedy. This is, I'm just gonna be indelicate, sorry guys. We use your hands. It's like the job at Subway sandwiches that I always wish I had. Then I'm just gonna do some of these yummy pickled onions on top. This is gonna be so hard to cut. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just gonna brush tuna oil. This is the banyat part. Dun, 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 dun. And this is the greatest tuna sandwich of all time. Okay. Mm. I'm good. 
There's so many different textures. There's so many different flavors layered into it. I get the crunchy cucumber and onion. I get the acidic, you know, briny olives and capers. I get the lemon and the mayonnaise. I get the pickly onions. I get that juicy, sweet tomato. The beautiful, like melting in my mouth tuna. And all of it is like sandwiched in this like crispy bread that's starting to get soggy from the inside out. And it's so delicious and it's totally worth it. And it's, I think a really fun party dish, frankly. Please make it, I beg of you. <laughs> Give me some privacy now. <laughs>